Okay, we retain another integral from the UK integration be 2024, number eight. We have the integral from zero to pi over two of all this stuff, dx. And I did this one a while back, and what I wanted to do is an alternative method on this using this formula over here to the right. It's probably gonna be pretty similar, but this formula I think is gonna kind of help us out. But what I'm gonna need to do before using this is we need to rearrange it because we clearly don't have something in this form. We don't have the t or the x in the denominator. So for my first step, I think what I'm gonna do is just take sine 2x and use the double angle formula. And we'll just write this as two sine x cos x. But then let's take this two and I can just bring it out front of the integral, write it as a one half. And then I notice we've got tangent here, tangent here. It'd be nice to do a u substitution if we get secant squared in it. So what I can do is if I just multiply in secant squared x, just multiplying by one like this, now when I do that, what's gonna happen is one of the secants is gonna cancel out the cosine. And then with the other secant, we'll get sine over cosine or tangent. So what's gonna happen, we're integrating from zero to pi over two. And now the denominator just becomes tan of x. I'll just multiply this in here and leave it. So we just have secant squared x dx. Doing it that way now, we're perfectly set up for the u substitution because we've got tan everywhere and the derivative of tangent right here. So for the u sub, I'll do u equal to tan of x, du equals secant squared x dx. Go ahead and substitute. We have our one half in front, pi over two, tan of pi over two. Now we're going to infinity, just like our formula. Plug in zero, tan at zero is just zero. Then rewriting all this, we have e minus one over square root of three u. And this one's just gonna become e minus square root of three u. This is just our du over here and this is just u. But now with the substitution, this is gonna match our formula exactly. We've got our bounds in the right place. We've got our f of u will be this stuff. And then the t, we just have u, this is our f of u. And so we can just kind of go ahead and apply this formula. So what's gonna happen, we still have one half in front, same bound, zero to infinity. And then we just need the Laplace transform of all this stuff right here. So now for this Laplace transform right here, we can use our formula. We could break it up into two Laplace transforms separated by a minus sign. So I'll just kind of do that on the fly, knowing we've got to do two Laplace transforms here using this. So what's going to happen is we're going to have one half integral from zero to infinity. So on this first one, the a value is going to be minus one over square root of three here. So using this formula, we have one over s minus times minus is plus one over square root of three minus and then for the next one, the a value is just gonna be minus square root of three. So we get s plus square root of three. Let's bring the one half in front. This first one, this is gonna be natural log. I'll drop absolute value because we want s to be greater than zero on it. So we'll have s plus one square root of three. Second part minus natural log s plus square root of three. And we need to evaluate from zero to infinity. But before I evaluate, let's bring this all together with log properties we're subtracting so we can make this a fraction like this. And also with the one half, I can bring it into the exponent and write it all as square root. First, when you evaluate infinity, these constant values aren't gonna matter. So it's just gonna be square root of one. So it's gonna be natural log of one or just zero for the first part. Plug in zero, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have natural log square root one plus square root of three divided by square root of three. Simplifying that a little bit, what's going to happen, we're going to have minus ln, just bring that and multiply it together, we're going to have, this is going to become one third here. But then we'll use the minus sign to flip it, and so for my final solution to this, we get just natural log square root of three. Okay, so there you go, just kind of a slight change in the method, because I think in the previous one, I'm guessing we did Feynman's trick on it. It's not very different, but this is kind of a little bit of a shortcut, I think, on the previous method. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.